Welcome to ECE Limu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have looked at some of the applications of the magnetic effect on an electric current and one of it was an electric bell. Then we looked at an electric motor or the DC motor. Now in this lesson, we are going to look at the magnetic tape peak recorder and the moving coil loudspeaker as the other two applications of the magnetic effect on an electric current. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain how a moving coil loudspeaker uses the idea of electromagnetism on its operation. And then later we will discuss how a magnetic tape peak recorder also uses the idea of electromagnetism in its working and its operation. The first application that we're going to look at is a moving coil loudspeaker. And we have an image of the same on the screen. This is how most moving coil loudspeakers look like. So this moving coil loudspeaker are used to convert electrical signals from an audio amplifier to sound. So they just convert electrical signals using an audio amplifier to sound. And most of the time you are going to find this one in radials as sound output, television sets, computer sets, and even other audio systems. So this moving coil loudspeaker utilizes the fact that current carrying conductor experiences a force when put in a strong magnetic field. And this one, we discussed it when we were discussing Fleming's left hand rule or what we call the motor effect, which states that if you position your left hand in such a way that the first finger points in the direction of the magnetic field, second finger in the direction of current, then the thumb will point to the direction of force if the three fingers or if the two fingers and the thumb are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other. The main parts of this moving coil loudspeaker, first we have a permanent magnet, which is in ring form for a reason we are going to see later. Then we have a voice coil or what we call a speech coil. Then we have a suspension and a diaphragm, which vibrates whenever there is a detection of signals. So the function of the powerful ma permanent magnet in this case which is a cylindrical, is to produce radial magnetic field. Remember radial magnetic field, we said this is a magnetic field which cuts the solenoid at an angle of 90 degrees, therefore producing maximum force out of it. Then in this case, we have a speech coil and it's wound on a former in a cylindrical way and positioned in a narrow gap between the pole of the magnet and it's free to move back and forth whenever there's a magnetic field. Then after this, what you do, you, uh, you connect to the coil a varying electric current whose frequency corresponds to the sound being produced. Then after that, since the radial field of the magnet cuts at 90 degrees to the coil, a maximum force acts on the coil, moving it in accordance to the Fleming's left hand rule. So after you connect, and a varying electric current to this uh, voice coil, what will happen, uh, a ma uh, this magnet will produce what we call radial magnetic fields, which cuts this coil at an angle of 90 degrees at end point. So in that case, a maximum force will be produced using the Fleming is right hand rule, you can determine that. Then in this case, this voice coil will be moving to and fro, and in that process, it will make this flexible suspension with a diaphragm to vibrate in the process. So here is the cross-section part of the movable coil loudspeaker. And in this case, we have a magnet which is in ring form. This magnet in the ring form, it has the outer part, which is North Pole. In this case, we have the ring poles. In the outer part, we have North Pole and North Pole. Then the central pole, we have the South Pole. And here the, is the upper view of this ring magnet. In this case, whenever this 
magnet or, or it generates the the magnetic field remember magnetic field originate from north pole to south pole in this case this magnetic field are going to cut this um, movable coil or movable foil coil at 90 degrees at end point since they are moving from the outer part to the inner part which is south pole so every magnetic field here is cutting at 90 degrees to the uh, solenoid which will be wound on this south pole so what will happen since the current in the speech coil is varying the coil experiences a force so this coil here when it's being cut by this uh, magnetic field from north pole to south pole since also this coil or yeah this coil has an electric current then using the Fleming is a left hand rule we are going to realize that it's a force that will be produced now, since the current in the speech coil is varying, the coil experiences a force varying of varying magnitude and directed at the frequency of the speech. So the diaphragm, which is the cone of this speech, here we have the cone, you can see it here. Now the diaphragm or the cone attached to the voice vibrate at the same frequency. So this cone will be vibrating at the same frequency as that of this coil which will be vibrating remember this coil will this coil will be experiencing a force due to the magnetic field and the electric current which is flowing through it in the process it will be moving in and out and that's what we call a vibration and this vibration now will be will be directly proportional to the frequency of the current and in this case what will happen the air which is in between this um, speaker cone and the magnet will vibrate also in the process and therefore producing the sound so what produ produces the sound is the air which vibrates remember this cone uh, is attached to this coil when this coil will be move will be moving in and out following the flaming is left hand rule that movement is going to cause the air to vibrate the air which is in between the cone and the, the speaker or and the and the magnet now when that air vibrate it is the one which makes sound or which produces sound we are going to discuss a topic sound later so the second application that we're going to consider is a magnetic tape recorder and here we have some of the parts of this magnetic tape recorder one we have the signal current then we have the tape motion then we have the tape head magnetic emulsion on the tape and then the magnetic field so these tape recorders are devices used to record or to play back audio or video using magnetic tape recording medium. So in this case, these magnetic tape recorders, they came about or they were discovered in Germany in about 1930s. And then they were brought into the world attention after World War II. So for you to record a video or sound using this tape recorder, then the sound or the video signals are first converted into electrical signals by a microphone or a camera. So if you want to record a voice, then you can you use a microphone to record in, to convert this sound into signal. And if you want to record a video, then you use a camera to convert into a electrical signal. And the process, these electrical signals are then sent to the recorder. They are sent to this tape recorder. Now, what happens for them to capture that information or to play back the information? The electrical signals are used or is used to create a magnetic field in the record head, this record head here. And as the magnetic tape passes through the head, the magnetic particles of the tape are aligned to the strength and the polarities of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field that we have this tape will align all the dipoles of this tape will align themselves depending on the strength and the polarities of the field and in the process they do an according of the original audio or the video onto the tape now for you to play back this magnetic tape recorder then the magnetic tape is run through a playback head on the tape recorder and the magnetic field from the tape induces an electrical signal in the playback head that mirrors the original uh, sound or video. Now, this electrical signal is then amplified and converted back into the sound which is recorded initially, 
all the video that you recorded initially. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss an earpiece.